As I mentioned in the previous tutorial, quantization distortion, the byproduct of analog to digital conversion, is present in all digital recordings. It's always at a consistent low level based on the bit resolution of the recording. Most digital audio nowadays is recorded at 24 bit resolution, where the quantization distortion is not really an issue. But the audio on CDs is still only 16 bit, with a dynamic range of 96 decibels. And so the quantization distortion is at a level that could theoretically be audible. Even on CDs, most of the time the quantization distortion would be covered up by the music. But when the music gets really quiet, like at the end of a fade out, at the end of a song, you might hear the audio become more and more distorted, especially over headphones, as a song fades down to minus 96 dB. Now please note, in this example, the audio fade out has been cranked up 60 decibels, so you can clearly hear the quantization distortion, which would normally be at a very low, barely audible level. With 24 bit recordings, this doesn't happen till the audio is at a much lower level, minus 144 dB. Since the dynamic range of human hearing is only 120 dB at best, 24 bit recordings push this issue below our perception, and it's no longer anything to worry about. But with a dynamic range of only 96 dB, which does fall within the range of human hearing, CDs and other 16-bit recordings still potentially suffer from audible quantization distortion. However, there's a trick that digital engineers developed years ago to eliminate this problem. For 16-bit recordings, random noise is routinely added to the analog signal just prior to sampling and quantization, and again, when a mix is bounced down to a new 16-bit master stereo audio file. This noise is called dither, and it randomizes the low-level signals, where the quantization distortion is at its worst, effectively eliminating it. Again, in this example, the audio has been cranked up 60 decibels, so you can clearly hear the beneficial effect of the dither, which, again, would normally be at a very low, barely audible level. The dither itself is added at such a low level that it's virtually inaudible, even in headphones. You'll see these dither plugins in DAWs for use when bouncing down the final mastered stereo file. But it only needs to be used when making 16-bit masters, specifically for CD duplication or other special applications. All other masters should normally be recorded and bounced at 24-bit resolution, where dither is unnecessary. If dither is used, it must be the last process applied, at the very last stage of mastering. Any further processing, like a fade out, or even a simple level change, will negate the benefit of the dither. Most DAWs offer the option of dithering as an offline process, at the end of the final bounce to disk. This ensures that it's applied correctly. But again, remember that dither is only needed for 16-bit bounces. All other audio should be bounced to 24-bit, where dithering, though it could be done, is really not necessary. You might notice one option regarding dither, something called noise shaping. This is, basically, just EQ applied to the dither signal to make it work more effectively and be less potentially noticeable. Different designers tout different noise shaping curves, but in practice, any one of them should work fine. So that's the A to D and D to A process. When an analog to digital conversion is done, 
the quantizer spits out a new wave, a string of pulses that represent the ones and zeros that make up the individual sample data. This string of pulses is the PCM digital wave. In playback, the D to A converter reads this PCM data and recreates the analog wave from scratch, its smooth shape fully intact. The PCM data is the form of the digital recordings we make, contained in the standard computer audio file formats, WAVE, and AIF files. If you see it referred to as LPCM, the L stands for Linear Pulse Code Modulation. This is different from the smaller sized, lower quality, lower resolution file formats that are so common, like MP3s and the MP4s or AAC files you get from the iTunes store. I'll wrap up this discussion of digital technology in the last few tutorials in this course with a brief look at some practical aspects. Digital file formats and file sizes, and high-res and low-res digital audio options.